Hey Jimmy. Can you see me? I can see you good. Good to see you. Okay. Good. <laughs> good to see you. How are can you today, hear me? Jimmy? You hear me okay? I'm very good. Okay, great. How are you today? Uh today is is good. It's raining here, but it's good. Wonderful. I like the rain. <laughs> Wonderful, Jimmy. So Jimmy, this Friday, October 15, you're releasing your fifth album, Five or V. That's, so can you tell me a bit about the songwriting and the production behind this album? Uh the songwriting started uh, when we were on tour, like a last tour. Um almost 2 years now and uh Joe Stump had a lot of material written sort of uh started already and so he and I worked on material on the road and then we recorded more material on the road we were in Australia we recorded about 3 or 4 demos of things and uh then again I went to Boston when we got home about a month later i went back to boston and we recorded some more demos and some more songs we probably had in the end we probably had 18 or 20 songs to pick from um so we all just kind of listened to those and talked about them and and thought well let's see what doogie thinks you know because yeah. the singer has got to deliver it and no matter what a musician thinks about the material you may think it's the strongest song you've ever written or whatever but without a vocal and a melody you never really know and uh if the singer doesn't feel it you can't it just doesn't work you know so uh anyway we picked uh a group of those songs and sent them to Doogie and he really liked them and started writing immediately and then as he would finish uh writing uh i was working on my keyboards as before we would send him a song and stuff like that and uh as he would finish the vocals he would send the files to me and i would organize everything and then maybe add some keyboards or uh if i hadn't put any on there yet i would do keyboards for them um and then Giles and i uh, we co-produced the record together uh we would listen to this stuff and decide if it needed more background vocals or usually that's all it was we might want a little extra background vocal here or there or a keyboard part here or there um guitars were pretty much done at that point um joe had done the final guitars so i would i would organize all the tracks make sure that everything's right clean them up <laughs> and and make them uh right for the mixer and then i would send them to andy haller the guy that mixed the record yeah. and he would mix them and we'd get the mixes back and then we'd stress out over it some more you know we'd listen to the mixes and uh not only listening to the actual mix but listening to to make sure now that we had a final mix do we have everything we need or is there too much of something so uh and we tweaked a few things as the mixing went along and would and he would mix it again with or without a part or adding something or taking something away so that's kind of the way it happened the way we did it wonderful wonderful jimmy and uh alcatraz is going through a new direction with a new vocalist dugi on the show so how is it like feel to work along with dugi dugi's great dugi's a, a total pro and a really good guy and easy easy to work with um he writes very quickly comes up with ideas pretty fast and uh he'll finish a vocal pretty quickly you know in a few days you can get a vocal back from him um sometimes so he's been just great to work with and i knew doogie before i'd seen doogie play i was a fan of his uh vocally and his writing uh with going back to rainbow the stuff he wrote in the rainbow era was just great stuff that's one of my favorite rainbow records um and so i was real familiar with him and then i'd seen him live with shanker the shanker fest yeah. and uh and then when we we were on tour and we played in edinburgh and uh, doogie came to the gig 
So I met Doogie for the first time and we hung out and uh, quite a bit actually uh, at that gig. And then the next time we played in Edinburgh, a year later, uh, Doogie came to the gig and we hung out again. So I got to know him and um, just a great guy, just a real normal, great guy. Easy to get along with, easy to work with, you know, that kind of guy. Wonderful, wonderful. And just to know, is Doogie your first choice or did you have other people in consideration? No, our, he was our first choice. Yeah, we knew, we knew right away that he would be the guy. Yes. Wonderful, Jimmy. And Jimmy, is there any particular concept that was put behind this album? I'm sorry? Is there a concept that was put behind this album? You know, not really. Uh, it was just pick good songs and make sure we had enough power going on. Um, yeah, we wanted this to be more up-tempo, more just harder and heavier and more more up-tempo than our past records because the band uh, has evolved to that. Uh, five being the fifth album, this is really a continuation of No Parole from Rock and Roll. This is what we would have done if we would have stayed together. This is the kind of stuff we'd be doing. And Joe Stump uh, is the perfect guitar player for that because he writes that way. He knows where we're coming from. Uh, Gary and I having started the band, you know, back in the 80s, uh, Joe understands the whole thing and uh, our direction stays true to the original no parole concept, really. And um, the we're more of a, the band's more of a, a European kind of flavor with the neoclassical guitar and stuff. And keyboard wise, a lot of my influences are, are uh, English keyboard players and stuff. Um, I mean, I was into American music, but I grew up loving Led Zeppelin and John Paul Jones keyboard playing uh, just blew me away. So, uh, and Rick Wakeman and yes, and Keith Emerson, of course, and John Lord. So uh, as, I guess as a keyboard player, I was more influenced by all those guys, you know, from England and Europe uh, than I was American guys. And there's some incredible Americans, you know, keyboard players, obviously, but just not uh, big as big an influence on me. Or, and Joe Stump is, much more of a neoclassical European kind of guitar player. Um, so, and Doogie obviously comes from where he comes from. So that's been his background, having been with Rainbow and Ingbe and Shanker, you know, so it's a real good, it's a real good fit. You know, Gary Shea, the bass player, that's what Gary's, Gary and I have been into the same thing. We've been playing together for years and years and years. So. We were always into that. You know, even the band New England, that band was influenced by, you know, more English bands and European bands, uh, not really American bands at all. So that's the way this turned out. Wonderful, wonderful, Jimmy. And Jimmy, uh, talking about the cover art of this album is totally amazing, the way you have put everything. Uh, I really love the way that uh, art artistic things that you have put behind it. So cool. how, what, what was the real theme that has actually put behind this cover art? Um, well, basically, we, we knew we wanted a more modern looking cover. We didn't want to go with the older look and uh, not trying to get away from the whole prison thing or anything. We just wanted a more modern cover. And uh, an artist that we had worked with before and he had done some video stuff for us, a very, very creative guy. And so he sent to us about three or four ideas and they were all, they were all great. But this one we really liked. We really liked the way it portrayed uh, the name and the logo. And uh, also the way at five, we, we, Giles Lavery came up with the idea of titling the album five is just real simple it's our fifth record and uh the way he put it on the cover and the way the guy put the whole cover together i just thought was great really happy with that we all were 
Wonderful, Jimmy. And Jimmy, talking about the album as a whole, I totally enjoy this album. This is totally amazing. The way yeah. the songs has been picked and has been delivered is totally amazing. You guys just brought us back to the 80s awesome metal era. So it's really great to listen to those music from you. So as a band, how do you feel about the outcome of this album? Uh, we're very happy with it. And, and you know, you never know until you really finish a record and you listen to the whole thing that you, you're completely convinced. Uh, song by song, we as we're working on the songs, we love the songs and uh, we knew each song was great. And But it's, it's funny how when you put them all together, then you really hear, oh, this is the album now. And uh, does that song fit or this song fit? So we were all very happy with the way it came out and with all the material and the way it works together you know because some of the stuff uh, yeah it's just it's a variety of things but all headed more towards the heavy direction so we were very happy wonderful jimmy and do you have any plans this friday on the day of release uh no not really uh we're preparing for a tour so uh, my plan is to keep practicing. <laughs> I'm practicing uh, running the show at home just to, uh, to files, you know, to album tracks. And uh, I have mixes here with no keyboards on them. So I can play along with those and hear what I sound like playing to the band without other keyboards. And uh, I'm, I'm just doing that every day. So getting ready, you know, getting ready to leave town. This sounds good. And uh, what would be the upcoming tour plans for you guys? Uh, well, we'll, we'll uh, tour plans. Yeah, well, we go to uh, England on uh, November 1st mm -hmm. and we'll rehearse and then we'll we play a festival uh, on the 11th. And then we got a couple of days off. We'll rehearse and we're going to do some writing over there because uh, we'll all be together in one place. And uh, we're going to do some writing, and then we'll start uh, a string of dates with girls' school. Um, we're going to share the bill with them and play a lot of places that Alcatraz had played before that we love. Some of these clubs are just great. They hold about a 1,000 people, and uh, really, really cool places, good crowds. And then we got two more festivals, in that we play uh, another one in a winter storm festival in Scotland, which we played before. Great, again, great crowd. Those people get crazy. Um, so we're playing that. And then we'll play the underworld in London, which we love. That's a great gig. And again, great crowds, you know, so uh, really looking forward to it. And we'll come back, we'll finish uh, first of December. We'll come back and home in December. Take Christmas off. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, Jimmy. And uh, Jimmy, uh, you guys were one of the biggest bands back in the 80s, and there was a, making awesome music, and there was a long break. And then in 2020, you guys came back as a big storm and gave us an amazing album. So how was the band? Uh, do you feel about the cover overall years, and how has the journey been for you so far? Um, it's been great. I mean, you know, the the... I, I I wish Alcatraz could have stayed together uh, with Ingve, uh, but that wasn't meant to be. You know, Ingve always needed to do his own thing. We knew that, uh, and and he and I are friends, and he's a great guy. And and <laughs> due to uh, popular belief, he's not. Uh, we had fun on the road. Ingve and I got along fine and had fun. So, but uh, if that would have stayed together, this is what it would be like. Um, like I said, but it's really hard to keep a band together for years and years and years and years and years, you know, with the same lineup, uh, very difficult. So it was just meant to be that that it, it kind of uh, stopped after that third Alcatraz album. There was, that, that album was a very difficult record to make and we just didn't have that spark. You know, we didn't have the guitar player we just, that we needed and we just didn't have that spark. So, um, the break, uh, all those years was probably good, really, for all of us. 
So we all went off and did other things. And uh, it was really fun getting this back together with uh, Gary and I. And uh, working with Doogie has just been a, a, a joy, just been great. And Joe Stump. So it all worked out for the better. You know, it's really good. Wonderful, wonderful, Jimmy. And Alcatraz has a history of creating amazing musicians. You have created Ying Wei, you have Steve. So a lot of great musicians were came from Alcatraz. So there is something really great. So how it was like working with all these people and with the current band members? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that last part how, about the band. How it was working with all these past members and how it is like feels like working with the current members. Ah, um, well, Steve and Ingve both were cool guys, and and we had fun with them. Uh, when they left, I was sad to see them go, but I knew I knew why Ingve had to leave. I knew that he and I talked about it, and it was no big deal. Um, wish he could have stayed. And the same with Steve. Steve got an offer from David Lee Roth, and uh, I understand that. There's no way you turn that down. I mean, Alcatraz wasn't that big so uh it worked out great for steve and uh no big deal joe stump has been a fantastic band member joe is real a real band guy uh, joe has his solo career on the side i mean he does his own records so joe doesn't feel the need to quit alcatraz to do that so joe's very happy with this current lineup you know uh we all get along and it's it's real easy. <laughs> so um, I think this lineup will stay like this. We're gonna we were already writing for another record, you know, so we're already started. So um, um, we'll make some more records together for sure. Sounds amazing, Jimmy. And Jimmy, have you ever thought Alcatraz playing in the Alcatraz? I, I'm sorry, have I ever thought what? Playing, performing in the Alcatraz. Oh, at the at Alcatraz. Yes. Uh, actually, we have thought about that, and uh, I don't know. It would be a. I'm not sure how we would do that. Uh, I don't know if you have you ever been there. Nope. <laughs> I have uh, not. Well, it's an island, you know, off the coast of San Francisco. So um, I'm not sure how we would go about doing that because. Uh, it's a difficult, I don't know. I mean, we could. It would just cost a lot of money because <laughs> uh, you'd have to put gear on a ferry to get it over there. And then uh, the way the island is set up, you'd have to have a tr uh, Yeah, it would just be a logistical, a bit of a logistical nightmare. There's plenty of places to play over there. There's plenty of room. Yeah. There's big rooms and small rooms and... All kinds of cool. I've been there and done the whole island. We took photos there on the first record. So uh, it'd be fun to play there for sure. That's a great idea. <laughs> Amazing, Jimmy. And Jimmy, would you like to share some of the great moments that you had over the years? Um, I suppose one of my one of my highlights, one of my big uh, highlights was when Alcatraz went to Japan the first time with Ingve. Um, I didn't really know what to expect. I had never been to Japan before. So we were playing about a 5,000 seat theater and uh, we didn't realize how big the record was in Japan. So when I walked on, when we walked on stage and the, the crowd just went crazy and I realized it was 5,000 people, that was a, that blew my mind. That was like, wow, this is really happening. You know, uh, we had no idea. So that first tour, first show was amazing. That that was a, a real high point of my career for sure. Um, and then um, doing the record with Steve uh, Vi, the Disturbing the Peace was was a great experience. Loved that. That was that was a really um, I don't know. I just love that material. And I love that record. It's a shame it didn't do better, uh, but it was a departure from No Parole from Rock and Roll. So I understand, you know, people were way into that style of what we were doing. 
uh, but that record was a was a, a high point for me making records. I love that record. Um, but that first Japanese tour, that first show was a what well, that was a high that was a really a big deal for me. That was great. Sounds great. Sounds great. And what would be some of the next plans that you have in plan? Uh, well, like I said, we're writing now. We've started writing to make another record and um tour we'll tour more um uh, we're playing russia next year and probably scandinavia so just a lot more tour plans some more festivals um and just keep doing it you know and make another record as soon as possible and get it ready so that's what we're doing Sounds great, Jimmy. And Jimmy, finally, what would be the message for the fans around the world? Um, to, to, to enjoy this music uh, as much as we do. And uh, come see us play live, uh, for sure. It's, it's a really good band, good people. And I think they would really enjoy it. So I want the fans to get this record and 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 really listen to it because there's some really cool stuff on here and it deserves a good listening absolutely jimmy and jimmy thank you so much for giving me the time today for this interview it's a real thank pleasure you. for me to have you and oh thank you very much i really appreciate it where are you i'm i'm in india oh okay whereabouts in india i live in the uh, southern tip of the country in the indian ocean Oh, okay. I've been to uh, Nepal. Oh, that's awesome. So I spent a month in Kathmandu, wow, Nepal. That's so so uh, I, I love Indian food. I've never been to India, but I love Indian food. And Joe Stump cooks amazing Indian food. Wow, <laughs> that's great to hear. So, so he and I were going to England, and that's the first thing Joe said to me. He goes, this little town we're staying in for five days, he goes, we have to find a great Indian restaurant and uh that's which is interesting so but the indian food in Kathmandu was incredible amazing, amazing. because that's 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 close yeah. you know <laughs> it was it was amazing so i love your culture and your food and people <laughs> thank you thank you jimmy and i think you guys should plan and come and do a tour here in india i would love to <laughs> that honestly that's the only place not the only place but that's a place that's i know there's a lot of fans over there i know it and we would love to play there so who knows maybe we will that would be great great we'll be happy to see you here soon jimmy <laughs> and well, thanks again <laughs> thank you thanks again thank and you thank so you so much for the amazing music you guys are putting up it's really great to listen to you guys again jimmy, thank, thank you so thank you me. thank you appreciate that you have so a good day. I Hopefully see you and talk to you soon. Yes, Jimmy. Take care of yourself and you have a good day ahead, Jimmy. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye. -bye. Bye.